These data are out, they've been presented uh, last year here. Um, so the data have just been published in blood. And this is a phase one study of a new BTK inhibitor. So Brutinib, uh, most people will have heard of that by now, is you know, a very well uh, used BTK inhibitor. It's the first, first in class. But this 4059 is, is targeting the same BTK molecule, right? But it's targeting it in a much more selective way. And why that's important is that uh, the, the toxicity is very much less. Now, the toxicity of the brutinib is not huge. Most patients tolerate it well. But nevertheless, there are side effects, including uh, problems with atrial fibrillation, with an uh, abnormal heart rate, with uh, bruising, with arthralgia, diarrhea. All those disappear with this new molecule because it's more specific, because it just targets the BTK specifically. So those results have been published in blood uh, in the last few weeks, which is, you know, that's another good, good sign. Um, and we're now taking that forwards in, in a, another trial where we're using the BTK inhibitor in combination with a PI3 kinase inhibitor. So you see the way the field is moving. So we've got all these new agents which are very specific, but now we're putting them together and trying to find the right combination that will suit most patients and get patients where we want them to be, disease-free or disease-controlled. I prefer disease-free, personally, uh, you know, rather than having it lingering, um, without toxicities. And that's very, very cool. And that's why I haven't retired. Very good question. Very good question. It's going to be in combination, right? Um, what combination will come, will come into regular clinical practice? I, I think that's unclear at the moment. I mean, I've got... For my own part, I've got very clear ideas of what I'd like to do. It's trying to persuade the drug companies to put their heads together, right? You see, because we've got these wonderful tools, right? So with the BTK inhibitor, the lymph nodes disappear very quickly. It's quite remarkable, yeah? First time I saw it, I didn't believe it. I really didn't believe it. They just, they disappear within hours, yeah? And that is truly remarkable. At the same time, you get this lymphocytosis, the CLL cells coming into the peripheral blood. And so therefore, it's very logical to me that once you've gotten rid of the lymph nodes, you should use an antibody like obinutuzumab to get rid of the cells in the blood and the bone marrow, and then use venataclax, GDC-109, the BCL-2 inhibitor, to get rid of residual disease. So it's combinations. Now, where does 4059 fit into this? We don't really know yet, but I'm hope, hoping it's a, it really is a beautiful molecule, uh, and it's been a real privilege to work with it because you know we're seeing lives transformed without any any toxicity virtually, and you know that's a real privilege. So I hope it goes forwards. I'd love it to see it going forwards, and you know to benefit other other patients. It's a phase one again at the moment with the combination, right? So we're just trying to find out how best to use this molecule in combination with other targeted therapies, and and that's not simple. There are obvious steps that need to be taken, right, in taking this forwards as a, as a, a drug development program. But, you know, it's, it's an indication of, of how much is, is becoming available.